Hi, I'm Ali. I'm a first year psychology student and I identify as a queer woman. Hi, I'm Courtney. I'm a third year computer science student and I identify as a bisexual trans woman. I feel like one of the biggest things about women in queer spaces is embracing that every queer woman has a different experience. I feel like allowing the female voice is very important, but accepting that everyone has a completely different experience and we're all different as queer women because it's such an umbrella term, I think is really important. Yeah, there are just so many backgrounds involved and so many different intersections and also just experiences of womanhood in general. Like the way trans women experience womanhood is completely different to how cis women experience womanhood as well as where you fall on sort of the femme butch spectrum uh, if you identify as lesbian. Yeah, I mean, I totally feel like women have different, experience in, different experiences in general, but also in terms of coming out and how society views mm. them. A lot of queer women, depending on the sort of label they use, are viewed in completely different ways by society. So opening up the conversation to embrace everyone's differences I feel like is really important. Yeah, I think the first step really is representation, something I always bang on about, but um, it really is like crucial to making sure that everyone feels wel like welcome to come forward. If you have a variety of people represented, then people will feel like that their experience is valid. And their voice is usually heard. Yes. Because yeah. then there's always someone there who has a similar experience to them. Yes, yeah. And even if there isn't, just knowing that like the community is so willing to accept a variety yeah. of experiences means that you can you feel welcome to bring yours forward. And I feel like the community sort of becomes richer for it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, in my opinion, I always feel like the likes of Marsha P. Johnson, Miss oh, Major, yeah. are always my biggest inspirations because obviously I'm, while I'm a queer woman, I'm a cisgender queer woman, so in my opinion I have it a lot easier than yeah. most people do, <laughs> and especially trans women of colour yes. have it really difficult in history and right now, so for those people like Marsha P. Johnson, those women to step out and make their voice heard and fight in a really big way. I think it's really brave and I don't think I would have done that in the 60s so yeah. for them to be able to do that when they tend to have a much harder time than people like me do sort of white cis women yeah I uh, I think I, I agree with that <laughs> it's just um, amazing just when you ever you see successful trans women of colour is just incredible because you know how much they have they had to get through um, just high risk rates of violence high risk of discrimination. Um, probably the inspiration to me is um, Janet Mock and the cast of Pose. Yes. If you've seen, seen Pose, I love that show. Which is, Janet Mock is a, a trans woman of colour who is, I think, she, I think she's director or producer, and she's incredible. I've, uh, she's published books, she is just absolutely fabulous, and she's just been elevating the voice of trans women, particularly trans women of colour everywhere. And in the show she has cast so many trans women of colour, it's just absolutely amazing and it's just really inspiring to see trans women of colour on like international TV all over the world, big budget, it's, it's incredible. I always find it really fun to watch, especially in things like the arts because mm. obviously my representation isn't as big as straight women but mm. you, you've got a, quite a wide variety of yeah. white cis yeah. lesbians, gay women in the media and it's really nice to see but it always makes me really happy to see yeah. trans and queer women of colour on the screen because then I know that we're making a step forward in the right direction. I do think that it is important to like sort of acknowledge sort of like the pioneers of sort of like lesbian women in mass media like obviously Ellen is the big example um, even though she's not always great but like <laughs> she did come out in quite a hostile time and did sort of like you know create a space for lesbian women yeah. um, in media. And also I do think it's great to acknowledge the number of actresses who feel comfortable now to come out as bisexual. Yes. I think is good, just, because a lot of people sometimes say, oh, what's the point if you're not actively dating someone of the same gender? It's not about like yeah. the point, it's about having that visibility and knowing that like 
guess that charity doesn't have to be something strange or something that like, holds you back in any way. I mean, maybe this is just because I generally seek out queer content, but <laughs> I've noticed that there's been a slight sort of increase in gravitating towards bi characters of both genders, and I find that really exciting to see, because obviously yeah. it's nice to see bi characters in relationships with both men yeah. and women, because then it shows the variety mm-hmm. that can fall under, you know, a bi person isn't any more valid or invalid, depending on who they date, yeah. they're still a bi person, and I feel like representing that in terms of the media is quite exciting. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting, and it, uh, yeah, it's just absolutely amazing, the sort of spike in queer representation, and just bring it to the forefront, because honestly, mass media is how we consume so much information, so it's just so important to have that for not just to educate like cis straight people, but also to show LGBT people that they're accepted. Yeah. I mean, I feel like in psychology we have this concept called crowd contagion. Mm-hmm. So especially with the rise of the internet, people like TERFs who I feel like are quite a, quite an extreme section of the LGBT community because of how anonymous the internet is, it's begun a sort of craze of people taking on these values that they feel are too extreme Mm. because the crowd is so big, the LGBT community is so large that people feel like these extreme values are sort of okay and I feel like that's the biggest issue because the rise of sort of this turf culture, these people who identify as turfs has caused a larger increase in all the other problems we tend to see because it's those extreme values that influence other people to feel badly about themselves or to influence particularly straight cis people in the media to think that the LGBT community is something that it's not. Especially I saw on Remembrance Day the thing about the rainbow poppy which absolutely everyone I know who's in the LGBT community thought that was complete and utter nonsense but you get the media warping things in in sort of support of people like TERFs that give us all a bad name, really. Yeah. And I do think something to acknowledge with TERFs is that more of a problem in this country than in other countries. Somehow they've just been sort of left to fester within academic spaces and they've been sort of stamped out more in the States. And even our, a lot of our news publications feel far more comfortable to publish sort of TERF ideology than in the States, for example. Uh, the US edition of The Guardian actually wrote a letter to the UK version telling them that they need to stop publishing such transphobic content because it was shocking some of the things that were almost parroting kind of Republican talking points over in the States. is just sort of shocking, really. Yeah. And I think it is also because, in a way, it's a way for sort of homophobes to sort of have a way of attacking the LGBT community in a way that's seen as more acceptable. It totally fuels yeah. people to feel like it's normalised to treat people like that, and it yeah. totally isn't. Yeah, it's like, well, if we undermine trans people, then we can start undermining gay people again in the same way. And it's, it's bad, and I think it is something... It's something we need more community solidarity on, I think. I feel like it needs to be harder stances taken, really, about just sort of having a blanket, like... No, no terse policy really anywhere because we've got to you got to stand up for trans people. Yeah, you know? I agree. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the internet is it's kind of become this battleground lately, but it's nice to see that other members of the LGBT community are standing up and fighting against people like terse. I saw a the thing the other day. I think it was in Scotland that mm. lady who was kicked out of a gay club for spotting a turf friendly. Mm. outfit and she tried to post this thing online talking about how it was ridiculous and there was this massive stand up of the LGBT community that went yeah you totally deserved that that's what you get for wearing something like that and it was a trans friendly bar that this person walked into and expected themselves to be embraced for those kinds of completely transphobic transphobic views and I feel like we are taking a step in the right direction but it's the responsibility of the mass media to say to the general population, like, hey, this isn't right, we're not supporting mm-hmm. any of these views, because it's sparking more homophobia, transphobia, yeah. biphobia in homophobic people, Yeah, generally. Yeah, it's, 
it's it's very dangerous and some of the things that are happening and I think it does need to be uh, checked. <laughs> to be stamped out. Yes. Uh, I think on to the uh, topic of uh, erasure of bio women, I, uh, I think it's, it's just there's just so much nuance around this as sort of representations of, of women because they're just sort of I think sometimes you can get to a point where it feels like it's a bit of a sort of oppression off sort of thing between bi women and lesbians. Totally. When really I think the thing that community really needs to do to sort of resolve issues is to um, kind of uh, acknowledge that they both have different issues and yeah. that um, we need to work together to solve these issues. Uh, like, so bi women are, have these just super fetishized, stigmatized, in ways that are specific to bi women, yes. but then also lesbians experience specific stigmas, in particular for not being attracted to men, which carries a lot of stigma in a society that expects women to be attracted to men. Some pretty wild stuff, but yeah. I feel like the erasure of bi women, I'm totally calling out my own sort of section of queer women here, mm -hmm. lesbians give bi women a really hard time sometimes, mm -hmm. and especially when bi women enter in a typically heterosexual relationships, yeah. it completely doesn't make them any less valid of a bi woman or bi person. And I feel like it's sort of the the issue of polarization between those who sort of view themselves as like the pure LGBT, like mm. the, the, the gays and lesbians who, because they fit into such a, I don't want to say what represented, represented but within the proportion of gay people yeah. are the most well represented the tendy, some of them can use that platform to bring down others who are less yeah. represented and I feel like that's a big problem within the community mm. sort of gay women towards bi women it needs to be an acceptance that just because bi women enter into typical heterosexual relationships doesn't make them any less yeah. bi I do think though that um uh, that bi women do need to be... I think bi women also do need to listen to lesbians, though, at the point. I do think because there's this hostility, it then gets to the point where bi women sort of dismiss the experiences of lesbian yeah. women, and I do think there is yeah, a very specific type of oppression that is experienced by lesbian women for not being attracted to men at all, and I feel like sometimes bi women can be sort of dismissive of, dismissive of that because they're marginalised in other ways in the community. So I think, again, this solidarity between queer women is just so important. I feel like women in general tend to have a bit more solidarity, so mm. we need to follow the same in queer spaces. It's <laughs> important that we all embrace each other. Love yeah. and peace. Yeah. Let's all get along. <laughs>